Hello there everyone, I'm your host, Dr. Darkspawn, naturally, and today we're going to be looking at the second of the three-part video series of how to build a base in Meteor Maker. We're specifically going to be looking at how to build a dangerous base all the way from selecting your burial site to generally what you want to do for the base itself. Now, as with the normal base, I'm going to look at the type of player that normally runs a dangerous base. These are the types of players that want a bit more of a challenge, that want more rewards and think they can do it casually. They can just go into a base, they can do it fast and they can do it in mass. The more dangerous bases they do, the more rewards they get. But it was a little difficult for them. So these types of players are generally either a speedrunners or people that run duos with bolts and shields so that would be the first type of gun that can destroy traps and the shield that makes you invulnerable for a few seconds of course there are exceptions to this but we're just going to look at them as the highest quantity of the players that are going to be running these spaces which means we need a good speedrunner trap and we'll get to those in a moment so first we're going to look at some burial site options uh, I did the math as I did with the normal outpost for the rough capacity that you can expect to work with for traps not including normal blocks that you have to put down and for traps you can put down roughly 2300 capacity of traps in a semi dense room where they're all close to each other and their modifiers apply to one another. So that should give you roughly about 2350 to 2400 total capacity before it goes on to being a brutal difficulty map. Now with that in mind, it does not leave any space for putting normal blocks down if you buy a base that only has 2500 total capacity. And we'll look at them here. So we have multiple options, 2500 capacity for a dangerous base would be a bad choice because you wouldn't be able to use all of the capacity that you can for traps and guards and you would have to use a few hundred to put down the blocks depending on how long the path is for harvey so i would recommend if you want to make a dangerous base that you actually choose a base that has 3000 capacity like gasville and mountainburg on the bottom left they are still medium sized, they have two tombs on them, so the bedrock shouldn't be too punishing. And with 9000 gen mat on the bottom for passive extraction. That increases the lifetime of the base as stated in the previous video for normal outposts. And the more lifetime your outpost has, the more rage you're gonna get, the more prestige points you're gonna get, the easier it is to gain resources from players dying so in this case the perfect base for this would be mountainburg if you had used 2300 or 2400 capacity for traps you would still have a bunch of capacity left to build the the to encase the path of harvey walking towards the gen mat and then have enough capacity to beautify the base a little to lure raiders in which is an important part of it and uh, the base i'm going to be showcasing the dangerous level on today is going to be Isle Auerhout. Now Isle does have 5,000 kills and a 14 kill ratio. However, as before in the normal video, this value is different than it would normally be because there are a massive amount of social raids on this outpost. It was on social for about, I think, during the beta, it was for two, three days of the beta, it was on social and it's been on social since it was mastered and social raids add an attempt but do not add any kills and because of how the algorithm works and how they calculate it from a raider skill to kill ratio if an attempt is added and no kills are added the kill ratio gets reduced so this probably has a kill ratio of roughly 26 to 32 if i was just gonna you know, guess where it would have been if there were no social raids on this. This has gotten a massive amount of social raids. But let's hop into it, shall we? It uses about a 2600 capacity, which is what most of my dangerous bases end up doing since 
they're all very close towards the cap and just to prove over here that it is indeed very close to being on the dangerous to brutal cap i'm just going to put a guard down which is 50 capacity and we should go yes they're into brutal 26 54 capacity now this section over here is just a bit of flavor that I like putting onto the front of my bases. It uses about 100, 200, about 300 to 400 capacity. I always love to put like my own little stencil on bases, which is this uh, this iron claw grappling an unsuspecting victim from the front. But now let's delve into the core concepts of what a dangerous base should do and why it should do that. To counter speedrunners, to counter slow players, what do you want to do, what kind of concepts do you want to explore into and try and see how you can make them most effective. I recommend putting some pressure on the player using cannon backs. In the normal video we were using enforcers because we did not have a lot of capacity to play with. In this, sp uh, because it has more capacity on a dangerous base, we can use cannon backs. I recommend giving them both armor and reflex manipulation to increase their fire rate and giving them a line of sight over a slanted entranceway for the enemy raider coming on. So if as an enemy player I go over here, I aggro all three of the cannon bags and they can shoot through corrosive cubes. The corrosive cubes deter the player of grappling straight upwards, so they grapple down, which increases the time that they spend in this room and gives the traps above and the traps on the side of the room time to catch up and effectively makes everything in the room more deadly. The longer the player is slowed down, the more they feel that they cannot just do everything fast. They I need to watch out for too many things that's what you want you want them to know that there are multiple traps in this room you need as stated in the normal base video a lure the lure in this case would be the pressure that the three cannon bags shooting bombs at the raider right here would be applying those cannon bag bombs roll all the way to this floor as you can see it is only a two slanted block with a square on the bottom but it has an open um, block on the top and the cannon back bombs all go through the hollow or towards the side of the hollow through the corrosives fall on here if they hit the player directly the bombs of a cannon back obtain the momentum of the player I hit the bomb let's say the bomb hits me in the face and I grapple forward the bomb will be stuck on my feet and it will follow me effectively acting like a sticky bomb to wherever my grapple ends and die Oh, well, I would die as a raider. <laughs> and um, this kind of pressure is really great because depending on how you set up the room, you can punish the player extensively for going into the room to get rid of this type of pressure. Cannon bags with armor are slightly difficult to kill. Um, not if you have the plasma bow, which is great against guards. It can have a maximum ammunition of 15 and it does not have a lot of bullet drop on the shots. So it's pretty good at taking out guards, but if they're just using the normal uh, bolt, bolt gun, I think it's called, which also destroys traps, then they have a really high chance of losing their bolts. Now, in this particular case, I do not want the cannon bags to be running left to right, to be going to here on this corner. I want them to stay up here in between these teeth. That is why they have corrosives on the front, and um, this also has killed many players. I actually can toggle the... There you go. There's the filter for the players that have died inside these corrosive cubes. Because they cannot see the corrosive cubes, they go up and they just walk and run and end up dropping into a corrosive cube and die. This is not for catching bolts, however you can do something similar if you put corrosives behind the cannon backs. The cannon backs die, they fall backwards and they drop into a corrosive cube and effectively steal the bolts so that other players cannot recover them unless they have the plus pickup range mod for the cyclops suit. So, here are the deaths to the cannon bags, applying really great pressure. So, this kind of setup 
if slow players encounter this they will most likely die quite a few times to it before they get fed up and try to kill the cannonbacks because they do not know what's in the rest of the room in this case it's great as well to play with the player's perception walking into this room they are so focused on the cannonbacks and the corrosives above that they do not realize that there is a gap at the top and that there is a incinerator to the left but they will definitely see the iron claw on the right so in this case the iron claw on the right as well as the iron claw above is kind of just the bait to distract players from what's really going to be killing them which is the cannonbacks the hunter bolt shot trap above and the incinerator to block their exit once you do a punish in a sort of room like this where it's very it's, it's kill boxy um, but it's not spammy you need an incinerator pointing straight at the entrance that players cannot go back from if i'm a slowish player i took the killed the three cannonbacks and now i want to recover my bolts i headshot all three of them that lures the player into thinking that okay i can go there there's no traps it's just the three cannonbacks as soon as you go in you realize oh no i'm going to die and you turn around but there's fire covering the entrance great way to isolate the player from their escape very effective it catches a lot of people and um, with this lure as with the video done previously you want something that punishes the player for trying to recover their ammunition i have a iron claw here in the middle because it has a really wide angle and can hit all the way to the bottom of this corner potentially and it has a hunter bolt shot which uh, honestly it's it was a bit difficult to place these because there's already a sideways facing incinerator that covers this whole section a horizontal incinerator and the cannonbacks themselves apply quite a lot of pressure with the bombs that they shoot so even if they don't kill all the cannonbacks they still can kind of survive this room it's not insanely difficult um, but you have to know where the traps are and you have to account for many things at once which is the hunter from this bolt shot shooting all the way to the top of this ramp as well as the incinerator aggroing on you that it can shoot you the bombs from any cannon bags you didn't kill as well as the claw and the hunter bolt shot so effectively what i'm just saying is build a kill box and build a bunch of overlapping lines of sight that punish the player for doing literally anything we can move a bit back here so we can see this better there we go there are the lines of sight of the traps covering the entrance they're all facing roughly the same direction they activate and they have more range than their line of sight indicates iron claw traps at the back hunter bolt shots on the roof incinerators on the sides to block their escape all very good tools for making a kill box uh, shall i say effective you want the player to know that there's a lot of things going on and they do not want to deal with this room Effectively, in a dangerous space, they're going to be trying to rush it anyway, but you want them to not even try to clear a room and then force them into a very well set up speedrun trap. Now, this speedrun trap, I'm uh, going to move this the other way, like so. Oops. There we go. Positive. Right. This speedrun trap here consists of pistons and incinerators. This one does not need, although it probably can get, Dragon's Breath. I think that'll set us over to the Brutal Cap, actually. No? Okay, perfect. I wish I knew that before. I would have made this much deadlier. This incinerator just points towards the front and distracts from the second incinerator further down the hallway which i do not yes they do shoot through corrosives i think but not through the bit of corrosive that's on the side so you want a few pistons some with blockade some without as you can see these have no mods this one does have blockade and burning piston as a player you're going to enter this room you're going to shoot 
well, if you're trying to rush, you're going to shoot this piston right there, and you're going to grapple towards it, and then either kill the flamethrower first because it activates on that whole corridor so it needs to be taken care of otherwise you cannot pass destroy this and then shoot the first piston and then get killed by the second incinerator so you want a kind of zigzag pattern or you want an l-shaped corridor in which the two incinerators cover each other and pistons in between so that the pistons block the shots that the player shoot at them with the bolt gun and still allow the incinerator to shoot through the pistons. Incinerators can fire through death pistons. One of them in the middle, if you have a long L-shaped corridor, use about three or four of them in the corridor. The length of the, you, yeah, the range that the fire grabs can put down, the incinerators are five blocks with dragon breath and four blocks without effectively if you have a five block long corridor and each one of the blocks on the floor or on the sides or on the roof blocks have death pistons blocking the one of the incinerators firing at you and two of them have blockade one of them has blockade and burning piston and the other ones are normals players shooting at this with three bolts are going to have an extremely difficult time finding a gap to shoot through the death pistons and actually kill the incinerator at the back. You want to protect the incinerators at all costs, no matter what. So effectively these speedrun traps and would not work as well if they didn't have another piston at the end of the speedrun trap that also has burning piston and blockade. So let's say that you're speedrunning, you make it all this way and you somehow go through this corridor without the incinerator activating. You break the death piston on the side, run towards this side and you see another flamer directly after that also a speedrun trap and then the piston from behind hits you or if you make it all this way and just want to go around the corner this one is already extended and has the burning piston mod which kills anyone that touches it without meleeing it or shooting it which is very deadly against people that only have one melee attack I'll be doing a run of this myself to just showcase how these work again as a very good example and then after showing this I will also have a raid that someone has done of this in the showcase as in the previous video right so just to recap you want a good normal base you want harvey to have a slanted entrance into a kill box you want to have guards that apply pressure from range and then you want to have a lot of overlapping traps like incinerators iron claws to pull them back iron claws are extremely important and corrosive cubes blocking the line of sight of the player so that they cannot see where the traps are coming from and they kind of get zoned into this little tunnel vision going up this ramp all the players think i need to go i need to grapple this way and in grappling here they activate the grapple behind which sometimes hits them and pulls them through the corrosive cubes and subsequently kills them or as them activate the hunter bolt shot facing directly downwards in which case the moment they get grabbed they also get killed by the hunter bolt shot from behind then have a little added punish for if players actually meet can deal with the guards so they bomb the guards they use grenades etc um, to get rid of them and you know these traps don't get exploded by grenades so they go there they recover one bolt and they get destroyed by the trap above and the trap on the sides so make as little space in the kill box safe as you can and have a fantastic speedrunner trap the whole point of a dangerous base is to facilitate them to force them into the speedrun trap and then have the speedrun trap be super super deadly while not actually using a massive amount of the capacity um, something else i just forgot but remember while speaking about it these corrosive blocks in front of the pressure that you put on your room are great for catching grenades. 
if somebody would throw a grenade onto the slanted block here it would hop upwards and it would fall into the corrosive cube and effectively not kill the gods yes you can angle it right but for the first two or three grenades that they throw they might not realize that there's a hole here on the bottom that stops the grenades from actually killing the gods above and again just to reiterate give them fire rate to apply more pressure and whatever guards you use give them fire rate and armor armor is extremely important on many of the guards because they're just too easy to deal with otherwise and fire rate is great because it adds so much pressure to the entrance that you know, they kind of have to make two choices do i deal with the pressure get rid of the pressure and then try to recover my ammunition to deal with the rest of the base but die doing so or do I just speed run it because I don't want to deal with this room and dangerous bases are fantastic in that regard in where you have enough capacity that you can make a kill box super super deadly but also have a fantastic speed run trap with normal bases you have the problem you need to keep it under a really really low capacity and condensing all of your capacity into one room doesn't even make it 100% guaranteed that it's deadly. Dangerous bases can have a much higher probability of killing players, but it's like twice or three times the amount of um, probability because of the overlapping traps effectively being double. Uh, just go back to the video of normal, the total capacity of traps on a normal base was 990 to 1000 that you could use. Um, and on dangerous bases, it's 2,275 normally, on average. So, of all the three bases that I have, that's kind of the number that I came up with for all three of them. That is more than double the amount of capacity, and more than double the amount of overlapping traps in one kill box. Which is absolutely fantastic. It increases the probability of somebody dying, well, substantially. So, let's give it a run then, shall we? Using double sword, um, I'm going to be trying to rush this base. And with my knowledge of what to do... And using double sword, in which Sledge has a two and a half block lunge range, I cannot rush to the back incinerator fast enough. The moment I reach it, I die. The reason for this, as I'll now go back to the build menu, just to give some context towards it, is that this is the maximum range of five blocks of distance. And one... Well, I thought there was another piston here. Oh, I removed one of these pistons. Oh, it's the one at the back. Forcing me to deal with the piston at the back, as well as the piston on the front, having very good blockade timing. The three blocks I need to cross for the incinerator or just enough that it starts shooting no matter what I do with the melee weapon. So people doing double sword rush cannot do this consistently. They may be able to throw down a phoenix pod using consumables of course um, and destroy this incinerator then revive at the phoenix pod further back and just go through this whole setting again. Um, other than that um, I can also give a showcasing of... No, actually, wait. I think I'll do that in the video of the replay that Soul Soldier did of this space.
All right, and as an added bonus, I'll be adding a second outpost to this video. Is Leiden, also one that I've built, and has a little tip chart at the back. It's a bit of a meme, um, but this one focuses less on the kill room itself and more around capturing or catching the player off guard before and after the rush trap itself. Let's give it a fly through, shall we? At the start, it has a floor hollow with a bomb ejector on the bottom, a very effective trap to catch players that are unawares, and a hollow above with bloodthirst warmongers to get them from behind. This setup is centered around catching slower playing players that are using the gun more than they are trying to rush through. Um, because you get those types of players as well. You've got hornets and cannonbacks in this room that have vision over the entrance that apply a massive amount of pressure. The hornets have leash so they do not exit the room. The cannonbacks cannot walk off of these two blocks so they do stay where they are. And the one on the left has optical implant just to make sure that 100% they aggro and bloodlust triggers on the warmongers at the back. For the entrance itself it has a opaque corrosive cube which nobody wants to grapple through it has a incinerator above cutting off their escape if they try to leave with napalm and eruption to leave an aoe on the floor and to explode after it has been activated another incinerator just to force a bolt out of them once they enter so that they definitely have minus one bolt that they cannot deal with anything else in this room a claw trap to catch speedrunners and a hollow cube on the floor with again chaos bombs just to ensure that the bombs bounce further and that they have increased range on detonation for the speedrun anti-speedrun corridor i have placed a iron claw towards the back of the corridor as you speed run into this you look to the front you try and get rid of the incinerator in front of you and you get yanked backwards into the shots of the cannon backs and the hornets if you didn't clear them um, or into the death piston on the floor if you didn't destroy that forcing the player to as they go here to immediately get rid of the trap at the back if you wanted to make this slightly more deadly i suppose you can put a incinerator on the back though i'm not sure if that is going to turn this into brutal it is so uh, iron claws have less value even if it has a mod on it than an incinerator trap which i think is why i opted for this so that i can put an extra mod or two on the cannon backs these two corrosives with opaque on them do not allow people to see through them giving some of them the uh, false security that they can grapple through these and try and get through to the opposite end of the corrosive cube where in fact there is a solid block on the other side and it is a trap it is bait this also allows some of the hornet shots to pass through as well as uh, some of the cannon back shots to hit the bottom of this block and roll into this corridor of pistons in case the player does come this way all right so it's got pistons on top bottom it has some of them have unstable some of them have blockade just to throw off the timing to make this incinerator safe there's a second incinerator with napalm oh no eruption to prevent them from just instantly rushing towards this and impaler trap with destruct so that it explodes afterwards to force the player out of this corner and into where this bomb ejector with chaos bombs shoots all of these bombs down this whole corridor and a grapple at the back that activates over here and can shoot an enemy player all the way towards this bomb trap and yoink them back into the bombs then uh, for this there's nothing really going on here it's just kind of bait to try and uh, lure the player into a false sense of security the next time they see one of those on the floor a tomb incorporated into the build and a second wave of pistons to stop players from instantly leaving a second wave bomb trap with no hollow cube above it so that there it catches them unawares and a first wave hollow with a chaos bomb trap above as you go upwards towards the gen mat and a bolt shot to shoot them from behind so uh, yeah there will be a this is another good example of you know how you can use some second wave traps 
to try and pressure the player without um, without making the cure room too deadly. You know, put a few second wave bomb ejectors down. You know, mess with the player's perception, and uh, also a great alternate setup for a anti speed run corridor using iron claws and iron claw at the back to grab them back into the lure or the pressure guard so that can kill them or an iron claw quick quick launch to grab them back into the bombs and the other traps and or incinerators if they tried skipping them and some funky corrosive cubes that catch players trying to grapple through them as well that just about wraps it up for this video it was rather fun making this and i hope it's been educational and that it births some amazing dangerous level outposts if 
you feel like you want to give me a like and a subscribe if you like the content um, as always i'll be dropping the meet your maker community discord link in the description below and i've been dr darkspawn you've been amazing and take care bye bye <laughs>